In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use gouache um, to create three different skin tones. So just like the other videos, we're looking at three characters, um, Finn, Ray, and Poe, because all three actors have different skin tones. So we're going to be using only four colors to do this. Um, I've recently become a fan of using a limited palette when working with paints to create skin tones. So for this, I'm going to be using white, vermilion, although I really should have a nice cadmium red, but I don't have one, um, yellow ochre, and ultramarine blue. This one happens to be an ultramarine light, but again, that's what happened to be available. Now, when using gouache, like with la liquid watercolors, or um, watercolors are a tube at the very least, um, you don't actually need to apply very much. I'm actually going to forego using the little spots because I'm not going to be making very many colors, so I'm just going to put a little bit in each area. Um, gouache is a very um, opaque paint. Um, it Once you place it down, it really blocks out um, any of the paper shining through, any of the color. Colors don't really layer with this. This is uh, very different than using watercolor in that respect. Um, so you really have to blend exactly the color you want and place it down. Traditionally, this material has been used for illustration purposes. Um, because of the very flat surface, it was easier to photograph, to use for um, advertisements and illustrations and so forth um, in previous time periods. Um, it's often used very effectively for children's illustration as well. Um, I'm really liking it as an art material. Um, I really enjoy using it for doing some portraiture. So I'm going to use that to be creating these three skin tones. Now, um, my other tools are two brushes. I'm using a size four and a size two. They're both synthetic round brushes, nothing special. They're student quality ones, seen better days, but they're not in too bad condition. And I've got a jar of water, um, just because I find the brushes tend to glide a little bit more easily like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating just an overall base color um, that's going to be used in the majority of the face. Um, I need to pick up very little paint to get what I'm looking for, so I'm taking just the smallest amount of red and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the yellow ochre and I'm going to blend them together. You can see that red is quite strong, it actually cuts through the yellow quite strongly, so I'm going to cut it a little bit more. And now I'm going to start adding some white in. I'm starting with a base tone for Ray's skin because her color is the lightest. Um, I find it's a little bit easier to start with hers. Right now I'm still thinking this is a little too pink, so I'm going to mix in just a bit more yellow ochre. And now it's gotten way too dark again, so once again I need to go back in and add more white. You can see how quickly it escalates and you end up making more and more of the color. Um, certainly more than I'm going to need. But that's why we try to work with small amounts to figure out exactly what we need. Or which color we need. Now I'm going to be testing my colors on this paper just to be sure that I'm happy with them. So I'm just going to do a little test. It's a good light color. So I'm going to use that to start to apply on her face in the areas that are showing that color in the photograph that I'm using as a reference, which is a still from I think a behind the scenes moment on the Star Wars Last Jedi um, filming by the looks of it. Now that I'm starting to apply it, I'm actually thinking it might be a little too dark. I might have to go in and add another coat on top, which is a slightly lighter color. But it is allowing me to kind of get a rough estimation of the color I want. Um, while I'm doing this, I find it's helpful to see if I'm using that color anywhere else in the other images, and I can go ahead and block those in right away. So because it's darker than I expected, It'll actually work out really well for this actor. 
just along his cheekbone and a little bit along his forehead. Now my drawing is not actually done in pencil. My drawing has been done in um, carbon um, because I was using carbon paper to trace. Because I'm trying to use the same image over and over again, but just changing materials each time. Um, I have been just progressively tracing the same image over and over again. So that isn't actually pencil, it's carbon. So we're gonna see how that picks up. It might, I might end up picking up a little bit more of that black than I wanted to off the line drawing. Um, it certainly was an issue when I was doing the um, example using wax crayons. Um, so it's not always a problem, but it can be at times. Um, we'll see. Also, of course, the dirty brush might be a bit of an issue. Okay, now um, her skin tone is showing a little bit more hints of orange, so I'm gonna wanna darken that up again. So I'm gonna bring in a bit of that red. Um, there's actually some areas that are a little pink, so maybe I'll go straight in with those ones first. This is just along the cheekbones. You can see that I'm just blocking in those areas. There's no real blending going on. The blending that happens, happens on the palette itself. I just want to place those down approximately where those colors are. Okay, and now I think I'm going to add in a bit more yellow, but this time I'm going to add it on the other side so it can start making two distinct hues, one going more yellow, one going more pink for the different areas. So it's a bit along the forehead that's got a bit more yellow in it. And I'm noticing that my brush is starting to get a little thick um, with excess paint. A little bit more of the red. Whoa, way too much. Don't forget, art teachers make mistakes too, like I just did. That is way too red. Okay, well, I'm going to use what I can of it for now to just define in some areas since it's a little pinker just under her ear as it comes down to the jawline. Now I am working on paper from a Moleskine sketchbook. Um, it's not ideal paper for working with gouache, but it is what I had available. Um, it is good to work on a, a flat watercolor paper. Remember that with these images, I'm not trying to make overly detailed images. I'm not gonna worry about going in and getting all the details right. I'm just working on how to apply skin tones. So they are very generalized. Um, that's partially for my own sanity since I'll be making the same image in probably like eight different materials um, as I'm creating these demo videos to ensure that all you students, especially you year 11s, um, can create flesh tones no matter what material you're using, since you've all asked to use different materials.
I think I've gone actually too dark with her skin tone overall. Um, I've done my best to achieve it, but I don't think I've quite got it. Probably let that one dry while I go over here and work on the next image. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to this one and start to block in some of those darker tones with, with this orangey yellow sort of color. More water in my brush. Okay, and start bringing in some of those pinks. All right, now to get the olive tones in his skin, I'm gonna have to start mixing in some of this ultramarine. Um, I wanna use a very small amount because it very quickly changes the color. And you can see just by adding that little bit of ultramarine in, I've already pushed this paint into more of the blue tones. I'm going to have to go back to that ultramarine and add in a bit more to really get to the tones that I'm looking to get because I want to hit that olive tone. I need to really balance that blue and yellow ochre but not go too far that I get straight to green. I want to just say sort of a brownie green. So a touch of red will help do that. All of skin tone really shows up, especially in the five o'clock shadow, but a little bit on the three quarter edge of his face. And kind of anywhere where there's a hairline, it kind of gets reinforced in the shadows. I have to go a lot darker to get the values in the neck. That does, however, give me my first tone to apply over here with Finn. Right now that is way too green. I need that to... really mix out. I think one of the problems is I've got a little bit of white in that blend right there, so that's probably causing me a bit of the issue. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush, come back to that, and let's start with a fresh area of mixing. So I'm going to take a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow ochre, possibly more yellow ochre in a second, and a little bit of the 
ultramarine, and I'm getting a nice darker brown there, which will be good for applying some of the shadows along his neck. Um, as well as giving a little bit more definition to areas in his facial hair. Once again, I'm not doing the features such as the eyes or the lips. I'm just working on the skin tone with these. overly textured that area and now that's coming across a little too much like facial hair and his facial hair is very clearly shaved off so we're gonna have to go on that again a little bit of water while it's still wet helps blend that out great thing with gouache is it gets reactivated anytime you add water to it so super easy to modify if you need that little too red there. I'm going to risk it and add a bit of white. Alright, now that I've finished that one, sort of, um, I'm going to go over and work on the final image, which is the one of Finn. Now with the one with Finn, I want to try to avoid adding in any white paint um, if I can, except for that couple spots of highlights, um, because as soon as I add in white, it's going to dull and flatten that image, so I really need to balance using yellow ochre to get some light tones into the various browns that I'm going to be mixing. Um, you can already see I've gone quite dark because I added way too much ultramarine blue, but I'm going to be using that to block maybe the darkest areas in his skin tone and just establish where those are before going back for those highlights. Although I don't always work that direction. Sometimes I do accidentally end up going dark first and then adding in highlights instead of going the other way around, which is what I've been trying to do usually when I use gouache. So now I'm going to start adding in little bits of yellow and red and making kind of modifications to the brown that I'm using so that I can make the different tints and tones in his skin.
Okay, now that I've established most of my darkest tones, I want to go in and I want to add in some lighter tones to get those highlights. Um, I can already see the color I've mixed. It's got a little too much purple in it, so I want to add the complement to purple, which is yellow, or in this case, yellow ochre. Always remember your compliments. They help with your blending. Alright, now it's still too dark and not nearly as light as I needed, so I need to go straight to adding in the pure white, which I was trying to avoid um, right off the bat, so that's why I was using sort of that blend that I had. I'm going to use that to do the highlights on his forehead, um, around his eye, on his cheek. Probably a little too bright right there, but just trying to catch the little highlight happens. sort of a yellowy light brown to get. Whoa, that was way too light right there. Just popping straight out. So let's use a wet brush just to shift that around a little bit and cut some of the strength of that. Okay, so while that dries, I'm going to go back and work a little bit more on the image of Ray because I definitely went too dark with that one. Okay, so I'd say just about now I'm done with the majority of this illustration. What's nice with gouache is to go over it when it dries with fine to pen to make areas stand out because it really works for the illustrative qualities of it. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit more and then I'm going to grab a pen. Okay, now that the image is mostly dry, I'm going to use a fine to pen, um, a fine liner, and I'm going to use that to just kind of give in a little bit of definition um, because when you're using this technique you want to kind of finish it up with some more graphic qualities because that is what it lends itself to. Remember though that I'm not adding in all the details of the features because this is just about mixing the skin tones. So I just want to add in enough information so that you can see sort of final effect when you use this material. Okay, so with just those little bits of line, I've given a little bit more definition to the image. And I can say that this one is finished at this point uh, for just working with skin tones. So this gives you a little bit of a reveal of how you're working with skin tones when you're working with pink skin tones, olive skin tones, or deeper brown skin tones. Um, okay, and that's it for looking at gouache.